What's going on, guys? Let's have a look at the second biggest favorite on Gazia versus Rosenstrike this weekend. It is Javid Basharat taking on Eamon Zahabi, the brother of the famous Varas Zahabi, trainer of George St. Pierre. We're going to take a look at their past fights, break down some of their skills that I saw in fights, and try to leave you with the best bet. But without further ado, let's try and justify Javid Basharat at minus 900 and get straight into this video. Oh, Till's out! It's over! It's over! It's over! Zahabi does have two losses, unlike his opponent, who's undefeated, and both of those losses came in the UFC. After being knocked out by Ricardo Ramos, he took on Vince Morales two years out from that fight, and in this fight, it was really disappointing to see Zahabi not really engage in very much. He was outpointed in this fight in a pretty boring fight. Vince Morales outstruck him 59 to 28 with a wide majority of those coming in the third round 31 to 13. When Vince got the fight in boxing range, we didn't see any real Zahabi takedown attempts or real sticking to that game plan. It says he had five attempts in the statistics, but when you watch the fight, he didn't really make it a priority to try and push that part of his game. And he's a really, really good grappler. He has three submissions on his record. And when he can get you down to the mat he's a black belt i'd like to see zahabi try to maybe hold those takedowns a little bit better out of the one real successful takedown he did get in this fight he allowed vince morales to get back to his feet and then really never went back to it Eamon zahabi just needs to start focusing on trying to win rounds trying to get points i think that sometimes he's outthinking himself if we end up getting the aim and zahabi that we saw in this fight we're most likely going to lose and it was frustrating to watch this one but it was coming off a very significant loss and a huge layoff but we've seen instances now where Eamon Zahabi does push the pace, uses his power right hand, uses a little bit of his grappling here and there, especially in that loss to Ricardo Ramos. I want to take a look at that fight as well because it was razor close before Ramos landed a beautiful spinning elbow highlight reel knockout. And Eamon Zahabi in this fight, I looked like he had some of the best striking he's ever had inside the octagon. Ramos did well with the leg kicks and his explosiveness. You could tell Ramos was probably a little bit stronger with his frame, all that kind of stuff. But when it came to Eamon Zahabi here, he was countering perfectly. He was dealing with the aggression of Ricardo Ramos and putting it back in perfect ways. And Zahabi landed a beautiful overhand right at 324 and then another one in the combination also using the uppercuts in the combinations he recognized in Ricardo Ramos' stand-up that he was ducking in when they were entering and he fell in love with the uppercut and he was landing it at will but again this second round this was Zahabi's clear and away best round in my opinion as a stand-up striker he had no fear this was the Zahabi you want to see if he's going to pull off a major upset this weekend Ricardo Ramos has gone on to lose a couple fights but that second round I would have given to Zahabi the first round was razor razor close and again could have gone either way and in the third round Zahabi was countering he was doing a great job on the back foot and moving forward and then a spinning elbow that nearly landed in the second round where Zahabi was looking good found the mark in the third round at the very end the same exact strike but this time against the fence and it would put Zahabi's lights out in a brutal fashion but again you can't look to this fight and say that he was the worst fighter here in my opinion I thought Zahabi did a great job being the shorter guy getting into the pocket and using his grappling again we want to see Zahabi's grappling more and more in the UFC he's hardly used it whatsoever he was taken down in this fight but again gets up scrambles so well and I feel like if he stays on top and tries to go for submissions he's going to do a damn good job in that area of the fight I really do like that about Zahabi jumping across Across the cage to Javid Basharat, who is one of the elite strikers in the bantamweight division with a gas tank that has provided him with three straight unanimous decisions where he's really upset his opponent's game and forced them to look like they didn't even want to get in the octagon to begin with. He has a style that tends to lull his opponent into not throwing significant strikes and it leads Javid Basharat to have these really, really wide unanimous decisions based on significant strikes because Javid has the output and his opponent really doesn't throw very much. But I really don't think his style is that jump off the page to me to justify him being anywhere near a minus 600 to minus 900 favorite here. I understand he's undefeated. I understand he has a lot of hype coming into the UFC and off of his three performances, he's on this huge win streak in the UFC. But again, his ability to stick and move, he can outstrike Eamon Zahabi in the spot. He could win a unanimous decision here, but I don't see that many methods of victory besides outstriking 
a Zahabi that doesn't want to engage. If Zahabi engages, I feel like we have a really, really good chance here. So my overall verdict on the fight, in my opinion, is I'm going to take Zahabi here at the number. Plus 500. If we get the Zahabi that's been knocking out opponents recently with this huge right hand where he's still willing to engage, Zahabi, I feel like, has a great gas tank. Also to note, in an interview, he's mentioned some of the people he's been training with, 1FC lightweight champions. He was in Arnold Allen's camp when he took on Movisar Ivlaev. So he's been fighting with even bigger guys, and there's no big reach advantage here. I don't think there's a big striking advantage, and I honestly think that Zahabi may have the advantage in the grappling, even though Bashrat has shown great takedown defense and an ability to avoid anything to avoid grappling if he's at a disadvantage in any way. So come back to this video if we cash that plus 600 ticket. But that'll do it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, remember to smash that like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.